Welcome to this author's interview series. My name is Christina Teodoraki. I'm editor of Small Business Economics and Entrepreneurship Journal, and I have the great honor to interview to today Haim Letwin from Suffolk University and Michael Siusta from University of Massachusetts Lowell. Welcome, Haim. Uh, welcome, Mikael. And thank you very much for joining us and uh, accepting to share your uh, knowledge and information about your paper today with us. Well, thank you so okay. much for having us. So uh, Haim and Mikael are going to give us more insight on their paper entitled Passion and Attractiveness on Display, an Examination of G Gender Bias uh, in Crowdfunding. This paper is co-authored with Mikael Johnson from Louisiana uh, State University, Regan Stevenson from uh, Indiana University in Bloomington, and Cameron Ford from University of C Central Florida. This paper is published in Small Business Economics in August 2023. So let's start my first question. Tell us more about your article and mainly what is your article about? Sure. You know, I think at the heart of our article, we're really focusing on implicit stereotypes around gender and how these influence resource acquisition and specifically focusing on these kind of new digital funding contexts. So we look at, at crowdfunding in our case. And, you know, when you think about crowdfunding for a while, crowdfunding's really been talked about this way to democratize the, the funding landscape. So our, our paper kind of tests this a little bit. Now, we consider um, pretty well-researched uh, areas of physical attractiveness and, uh, and passion. So these are behavioral displays and physical displays that we, we know quite a bit about and, and how these displays are connected to gender and gender-based expectancies. And we look at how, we look to see how these things kind of differentially are influenced by being a man or a woman in a crowdfunding campaign. So we basically look at how being attractive or being passionate affect men and women differently in crowdfunding. Now, not surprisingly, we find that both passion and attractiveness are beneficial in crowdfunding. But what we did then is we dug into this a bit deeper and we looked at the gender effects. And that's really where we found the more interesting effects. Specifically, what we found was that attractiveness was particularly beneficial for women, but, but really only when the person judging the woman, the person evaluating the woman, the funder, had these implicit stereotypes of these gender-based implicit stereotypes around attractiveness. And we also found that passion was particularly beneficial for men, but also only when the funder, the person judging the, the, uh, the male uh, entrepreneur, held these implicit gender-based stereotypes around passion. So overall, our paper kind of finds some good news and some bad news, right? We find that uh, certainly crowdfunding gives female fund seekers a more level playing field than kind of these traditional funding contexts we think about. But unfortunately, the biases uh, at play in these traditional funding contexts are, are still alive and well in crowdfunding. Perfect. The last years, we have considered that uh, crowdfunding can be considered as an important and even a hot topic in, uh, in the entrepreneurship research. Some also could uh, criticize saying that it became like a buzzword. Uh, can we consider that it um, reached its maturity or um, can you tell us more uh, why this article is important and what we learned that we didn't know for already published research? A million dollar question, right? Uh, in fact, this paper, as we'll get to maybe at some point, has been through some history and revisions and resubmissions and multiple journals. And one thing that we did find is always getting pushed on the contributions. And as you mentioned, uh, the field has sort of evolved in how they've looked at crowdfunding research. And one thing that's come up repeatedly is that the importance of these various different cues have on crowdfunding outcomes. And there's been a lot of really important research that looks at that. But we really could notice that one thing that's happened is the funder has sort of been left out of the picture. So we really demonstrate that the funder's perspective can really play an important role on the impact of these various cues. And maybe even just as importantly, as I mentioned, we also get into these implicit associations. So we really are opening up this black box of stereotype research. So many studies that look at stereotypes kind of invoke it at a societal or a cultural level. And those are important in demonstrating what the typical person thinks or perceives. But we show that that really does vary across individuals. And some people hold these stereotypes more so than others. And those differences can really have an important and meaningful impact. And then when it comes to these particular cues of attractiveness and passion, again, we have seen an evolution of literature looking at this. We've also seen actually some ambiguity around these results. And so our research really shows that, well, one potential reason for this 
is that you really do need to take into account the effect of the gender. So failure, failure to uh, really take account of the gender regarding these particular cues and maybe some others may continue to just generate more and more ambiguous results. So we think that's an important finding also. And lastly, as it pertains to gender, as Haim has mentioned, there is some, there's been a lot of attention actually on this gender funding gap. Um, but, you know, as with these other cues, there is some ambiguity around it. So on the one hand, when it, as you mentioned, crowdfunding, when it first came out, there was this really strong held belief that it's going to democratize funding landscape for underrepresented groups. And some, and, and some research has definitely shown that it has, but some research has actually shown that, nope, the opposite has occurred. And so we do find that, you know, if you're looking at gender in particular, continuing to focus on gender's main effect may just lead more and more of these ambiguous results. And, and we think that gender can really maybe play as important a role in moderating some other impact of various different cues. So those are some of the, what we think are some of the highlights of what we found. You know, and in terms of the, the first part of your question, this crowdfunding is a buzzword and, and where we're at in terms of that, I, I don't know, I kind of think that crowdfunding now has kind of got more involved in this larger landscape of the different types of digital finance that are out there. So, you know, it certainly was a lot of research in this area, but I think it's starting to inform more broadly and generally in these new types of uh, uh, funding opportunities. This is amazing. Actually, this was a a thousand dollar question, but actually, it was definitely a thousand dollar response. Uh, <laughs> it was a thousand or even a million. Um, but uh, let me uh, let me go now to um, to the very early beginning, uh, the very early beginning uh, of uh, this paper. Uh, can you remember the moment that this? Uh, what were your thinking when this idea came uh, came up and? Uh, uh, you defined like you decided that this will uh, be the great paper to publish or to work on. Where did this idea came from? So, so I'm laughing because as Mike alluded to this, this very early moment happened a long time ago. Um, you know, this has been one of those papers that has really just been a, a long time coming. So, I, I started this paper when I was in, in my doctoral program, actually, uh, a couple of years after that, Mike was, was on my committee in my doctoral program, and at that time crowdfunding was this new thing. It was really, really exciting. And the research had just started on it, right? And yeah, at, at that time, we were really just looking at how passion and attractiveness might work in this context. And not surprisingly, like we found, they were both positive, right? This this uh, this positive thing was positive in, 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 in crowdfunding. And when we presented this to our colleagues, um, they didn't really see the contribution there. And this led us to kind of think about it a little bit more. And, and with what was going on at that time, these claims that crowdfunding was going to democratize the funding landscape. And at that time, early work on crowdfunding was kind of suggesting that also. It was kind of a natural thing for us to start thinking about how does gender play into this? How might the gender of the presenter work differently for, for men and women? And... Um, and I think at that time, some people would have thought there wouldn't be a difference because of this democratization. We we thought there would be. And this led us to really start thinking about how these how these things might work differently uh, in, in crowdfunding. Now, at the same time, one of our co-authors, uh, Mike Johnson, the other Mike, he was really getting into the stereotype literature and thinking about how gender stereotypes might drive other outcomes. So, you know, honestly, just by happenstance or, or luck of the conversation, as this evolved, we came together and really saw this opportunity to not just think about how gender influenced outcomes, but how gender and then the, the funder's perception of gender really influenced these outcomes. And, and while it's been a long time coming, I think it really led to a much more meaningful and valuable uh, transcript. Yeah, I think I'll just echo a little bit what Haim said. You know, certainly we've taken sort of a theoretical shift a little bit in terms of focusing on the stereotype based research, but then also methodologically, it was pretty interesting and challenging paper to work on as well, because we have multiple studies. I think we have had prior, you know, we've had various versions of different studies. And in particular, in this one, we employ an experimental approach, which again, now is becoming much more prevalent and, and more accepted. And, and we definitely encourage more and more research to pursue this direction, certainly combining multiple methods. So taking the field study and pairing that with an, an experimental approach, I think is one of the strong points of the paper. And, and But again, we had to sort of learn that as we went along, because uh, we have evolved both methodologically and, and theoretically as this paper has evolved. 
Thank you very much. It is extremely important for us to know how we start and shape uh, initially the, the project and how we identify the research gap. But let's go to the future. What do you see after this study public uh, this publication? Where do you see that this topic will go forward? Is there open directions? Is there new ideas or um, future research? Probably you are working or you call other researchers to dig more uh, uh, to, uh, in this topic. Yeah, that's a great question. So there's quite a few quite a few I think areas for future research. For one. We really only look at the high and low levels of passion. So as we, as I mentioned, just mentioned, we take an experimental approach, but clearly I think one possible direction is to look for possible curvilinear effects or interactions between the two or how these cues may work in, in part of a constellation or set of other cues. A lot of research is now taking that approach and looking at the impact of these cues. And then also we really didn't tease out why people have these stereotypical associations. We just look at the fact that they do. So we do think a fruitful area could also be to explore more in depth the underlying reasons why people make these particular associations and then why they would vary across contexts or maybe within the same person uh, in, in different contexts or facing a different person. And we do think maybe some recent work using a more of an evolutionary approach could be a, could be a way to, to look at this. And then lastly, I guess I would say we only look at these particular associations we do develop this novel implicit association test, this IAT, which we do think could be very fruitful for future researchers. Uh, but other associations might involve attributes such as trustworthiness or confidence or um, competence. Um, these are things that could also play a role. And then we really only look at the effect of gender, but clearly some other implicit associations related to other things such as race, we know are at play. And so I think we, that also could be further explored as well. So a lot of a lot of future directions, I think, that this paper uh, uh, paths, makes a path for. I just hope those future directions will will happen quicker than the initial the initial <laughs> directions. <laughs> we all hope so. <laughs> and let me ask now another mil, uh, million dollar question. Um, we have been criticizing research to uh, to have impactful research and how it became uh, applied and from who impact for who and how we can um, transfer uh, our research and publications to uh, useful um, uh, and promote the entrepreneurial society and be impactful uh, and helpful. So how can your findings be applied and what will be the inside suggestion you may give to practitioners that wish to um, implement uh, your findings? Yeah, you know, I, I think even though this has been a long time coming, it actually is particularly timely right now. So, you know, in, in my institution, we think a lot about the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And, and number five looks at gender equality. And, you know, I hope this work really helps us think about these, helps us think about this and these new types of acquisition platforms that are really becoming quite popular. I think most importantly, our work can inform platforms. You know, these crowdfunding platforms and other types of digital finance platforms. Platforms want campaigns to be funded. They want them to be funded on their merit. And this leads to the highest quality campaigns. This leads to the most funding, the best reward for uh, fulfillment, the highest returns, and the long-term success of the platform. So, you know, our work really shines a spotlight. It highlights the existence that that there is influence of implicit gender biases on these platforms. And, and we really encourage these platforms to think about this, to make their investors aware of these biases and to provide trainings to combat these biases. Because in the long run, what this will lead to is a more level playing field with better outcomes. And this is both the right thing to do, but also good business. You know, for entrepreneurs, who at this time operate in this context where we know there are these pervasive biases, we wanna make sure they're aware of these biases. We wanna make sure that they understand, dependent on their gender, the different displays may benefit them or not benefit them. We're really hesitant though to tell these entrepreneurs to play into these biases. You know, In the short run, that may help a particular entrepreneur, but we have very big concerns that in the, wrong, in the long run, this could further entrench these biases into this funding landscape. You know, it, so we we really hesitant to make that advice. 
I would like to thank you because we're very to the end to this interview. I really enjoyed so much of this discussion today and I would like to thank you again uh, for sharing your uh, insights and how we make all the journey from the creation of the idea, the findings, the contribution, and actually the uh, the outputs, uh, the outputs, uh, outputs and the empirical uh, implications of the paper. I would like to thank you again, and I would like to invite also all our readers and listeners to download your paper, which is available from the Springer's uh, website. Um, and I look forward to, to continue this discussion in other uh, in other moments and occasions. And I also uh, invite other uh, you and uh, um, uh, the research community to continue to work on this important and promising research topic. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for having us.